Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and here's a short video where we're going to use uh, Geiger counters and gamma spectroscopy to figure out what this little guy is right here. And I already kind of know what it is. It's a 1942 compass of some hideous radium filled variety. Let me move back a little bit where you can see it better. Uh, apparently it opens up by some means. Dare I even open it? Uh, you know what? There, let's see. It opens. There it is. Now, let's see if it's radioactive. Using my um, old CDV700 here, we'll cut that on. The beta shield's open. We'll put it on the tester. That's definitely working. We'll put it on times 10 and hold it up against the check source on the side. And see that it, it shows about 2.5 milliankin per hour which means that we know it's working and that it's calibrated. So on the times one scale, oops, let me stand back up, let's put this over top and see what we get. I'm only going to be able to pick up betas and gammas from this, of course. Looks like a little over 100 counts per minute. Well, the CDV700 definitely thinks it's radioactive. Let's move that out of the way. Let's quickly bring over the more powerful Inspector EXP. You know, around 20, 20 to 30 counts per minute is what I've been getting so far as a background. Obviously, the Inspector is significantly, significantly better than the CDV700, but then again, we already knew that. Now, I suspect radium-226 and decay progeny. That's what I suspect. So there should be beta, and there should be alpha, and there should be gamma. Radium-226 decays to radi radon-222 via alpha, radon-222 to polonium-218 via alpha, and then to lead-214 via alpha, then you get beta to, uh, to bismuth-214, Beta to polonium 214, alpha again to lead 210, beta to bismuth 210, beta to polonium 210, and then finally stable lead 206. That's what I think is in it. We'll use a black light to see if it glows any. Okay, let's cut right, the light off. Lights off. Let's put our uh, black light up against it. We get a little bit here and there. Not too much looking back at us, just a little bit. Nasty thing. Now we'll see what's going on. Get some off the paper, the paper towel itself. That's from water when my hand touched it. Wow, CDV 700 lights up like a Christmas tree. All right, well, let's go put this down in the gamma spectrometer and see what we get. All right, with the object sealed, we'll take it down here and put it in the gamma spectrometer. What's dangerous about it is the oil. The oil has been floating around with radium salts now for, what, over 50-something years here. And as a result, well actually 60 I think, as a result of it, it may have picked up um, some of those radium salts. Actually, let's um, take one of my, I have a little wooden block that I use for testing. I've already tested the wooden block itself separately to ensure it doesn't impart anything and it does not. Yeah, that sets it up a little bit higher so it doesn't fall over. Get that jammed up in there. Now that that's in place, we'll put our lead into place. And there's the last lead block. Make sure that's sealed up nicely. Now let's take a look with the gamma spectrometer and see what we get. Go, Nikonami, go! Okay, folks, so now here we are in the software ready to test the compass. This is the software that comes with the gamma spectrometer. And just to remind you of a couple quick things. Down here in the x-axis, we're looking at the energy. This is low energy, this is high energy. So you're going from a couple thousand electron volts all the way up to nearly nearly a thousand thousand electron volts. That would be one million electron volts of energy. This is the re region I usually work in, the first one million electron volts of gammas that you usually bump into. Now we're in a logarithmic view. So starting here at the bottom, we have zero to 16 counts then 16 to 256, 
256 to 4,000, 4,000 to 64,000, 64,000 to a million, 1 million to 16 million. So this is an exponential view. The reason to do this is so that it doesn't shoot off the screen. We might change to a linear view in just a moment, but all right, uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's run. As you can see, the gammas are flying out of the compass, striking my uh, crystal. The crystal is producing flashes of light, which are then hitting a photocathode. The photocathode is producing electrons, which are being pulled down the photomultiplier tube, gaining in power and strength and so on, until they hit the um, anode at the very end, and are, they're registered and sent to my gamma spectrometer, where they fit neatly into each one of these little channels based on their energy. Right off the bat, if you've done this for a little while, it should be sort of instantly apparent to you what is inside of this compass. But let me help just a little bit here. Let me pull up my energy cheat sheet because I can't keep every energy memorized. All right, and as I'm telling you this, this will become more apparent. Right off the bat, you see this guy right here, round 80. See, it says 80 right here. 80 kiloelectron volts, give or take. This is actually lead from my shielding that's being hit by high energy particles and it's uh, uh, reflecting back x-rays of various types. Okay, it's kind of like an x-ray fluorescence of sorts, telling us that we have lead here. Next up on the list right here, at a near, let's see, you know, right here actually, this right here at about 186 kiloelectron volts, 186 is right over here, so we're off by just a little bit in our calibration, two or three like, kiloelectron volts off. This is uh, radium-226. Let's see how far we're off. The peak center is somewhere right around, let's say, just a little bit back, maybe right here. That's one, 189, and it should be 186. So we're off by about 4 kiloelectron volts. Not too bad. Next up on the list, at 241.98, notice it's showing as 243. We're close. At 241.98, we have lead-214. And another peak for lead 214 again, but this one's at 295. Let's see, what does it say, 299? So we're still off a little bit. I should have probably calibrated right before I ran, ran this test, but I sort of knew it was going to be on it. I actually run these tests before I show you, just so I don't get blown away by some crazy unexpected results like promethium or something like that being inside of it. And right over here is another lead 214. These are the three lead 214s, the Goldilocks and the three bears. All right. Then over here is bismuth 214, give or take around 609, and we're showing up more like 613, so we're still off by the same amount. Look at that. And there's a little Compton, probably a Compton uh, edge right there from the, bis uh, from the bismuth, or it could be something from, um, let's see, six, yeah, it's probably a Compton edge. All right, so right off the bat, you can see this is radium 226 that makes this compass radioactive. Radium 226. And now I'm going to uh, let this zoom for just a short amount of time and show you what it looks like at the end. So we've given this a little bit of time to kind of like build up. Um, as you can see right here, the peaks are pretty well, pretty well uh, uh, um, laid out. You have bismuth 214, lead 214, lead 214, lead 214, radium 226, background shielding. It's what you expect in a compass like this. Now let's switch to a linear view and just to take a quick look. Wow, look how much more pronounced those are. We can even stop this smooth it a little. And there you go. This is a radium compass. The reason that there is so much more of the daughters, these are the daughters, hi, than you'd find in, um, in a fresh radium compass is because the, they're starting to come into what's called isotopic equilibrium. This is the point at which these guys start to level off as they decay from one to the next and, and they, they when you when you first put in fresh radium they start to build but after a while they kind of level off it's a mathematical function it takes a while because um there's a really 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 long decay for the very first uh decay here radium 226 is 1600 year half-life 
it's not enough to be considered secular decay. It's actually a transient decay series, this whole entire piece down here. And it's, but it still takes like 30 or 40 years to build up nicely like this. But anyhow, this object is going to become more radioactive over time as opposed to less. Although by now I would say it's probably reached equilibrium, so it's probably at about the maximum it's going to get to. Hope this has been Tom from anti-proton.com and uh, thanks for watching.